It looks like the data are looking better and better over time. Uh, as the data are maturing, we're getting the sense that uh, these drugs work really well. Unfortunately, um, some of them were also discovering side effects that were not initially seen. And so we are kind of learning more about the toxicities and um, you know, all the benefits that we can get from these drugs, but at the same time, we need to be aware of all the possible side effects. Um, in terms of drugs, there are three main drugs that have been approved in the United States. Um, one is ibrutinib, the second one is idelalacib, and the third one is venetoclax. So for ibrutinib, the new data at IHA is a combination with vendamastin and rituximab, which is showing over time a higher incidence of MRD negativity or minimal distrital disease. Um, we don't know how this will pan out over time. Right now, it's super mature to say that achieving MRD negativity is better compared to monotherapy. But it's interesting, to say the least, and we will see what happens with these patients as you know, the time progresses. As of right now, when you put and superimpose the curves, they are, essentially look identical, whereas um, if you use monotherapy or you know, combination strategies, but there are currently clinical trials testing this, whether it's better to do monotherapy compared to combination for ibrutinib. Second drug is idelalacib. And what we have learned over the last couple of months is that in patients that are treated frontline, the chances of getting an autoimmune complication or higher risk of infections is very high to the point that the European um, uh, members um, that advise physicians on what to use have decided to ask the physicians to not use it for frontline. And the company also has shut off all the clinical trials in frontline therapy for CLL or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, we didn't see that amount of patients getting this degree of infections in patients that were relapsed refractory, um, that were treated before with adalalacid. This is something totally new that has been seen now that people are being treated earlier. So that might be kind of like moving forward, sequencing how we're going to sequence these drugs. Um, help us figure out that maybe Idella shouldn't be used frontline or early on, maybe just use it for salvage therapy after you have failed therapy. Last but not least is venetoclax. Um, that's a new BCL2 inhibitor, totally different from ibrutinib and adelalacep because those were inhibitors of the B-cell receptor signaling pathway. This uh, drug, uh, what it does, it tells the cells to die or leads to apoptosis. And if you don't do a ramp up dosing schedule without close monitoring of the electrolytes, you may cause undue toxicity to the patient, mainly tumor lysis syndrome. And it can be very severe. So it's very important to monitor closely once you start the drug. In the United States, venetoclax has been approved for therapy in patients with relapsed refractory 17p deletion. But currently, the FDA is reviewing combination of venetoclax with rituximab for all relapsed refractory CLL patients. And that is based also on the data that will be presented at IHA, where combination with rituximab achieves a very significant amount of complete remissions. A very good number of patients have a response, including patients with 17P, about 50%, you know, very high 40% range. Um, of patients achieve a complete remission with this combination, and we are very excited about that. Um, what we're also starting to see is achievement of MRD negativity. And if you do achieve MRD negativity, 11 patients have stopped therapy uh, because by the protocol they were allowed to stop therapy at the time that they achieved MRD negativity or um, complete remissions without MRD negativity. And we followed them prospectively. And what we have seen is that out of the 11 patients, two of them had complete remissions without MRD negativity, and they did relapse 30 months later, even though they only were exposed to the drug about seven to 10 months. Um, but at the time of progression that they required therapy again, um, when they gave um, venetoclax again to the patients, they responded and there was a clinical response. So that's very promising that maybe we will get there to a point where we can use these drugs, get you to maximal response, and then maybe give you a break, you know, like a holiday. It's too early, but we are very excited that maybe this will be the future for our patients with CLL. Um, before, we didn't have any good combination where we can achieve this, but now with this new drug, 
it's looking very promising. And last but not least, there's two new drugs in the pipeline that are presenting also very interesting data here at IHA. One is um, acalabrutinib in patients treated frontline for CLL. Amazing responses in 72 patients that were treated, 70 responded, so very good. There were no progressors. And the responses seem to be um, hanging on for a long time, so we will see how that pans out. Currently, acalabrutinib, which is a second um, second generation BTK inhibitor is um, being studied in a phase three trial against tibrutinib. And we will see which one in high risk patients may show better response rates and may, um, better uh, time in remission. The other drug that seems to be very interesting at this year's EHA is a new drug from TG Therapeutics. It's a second generation PI3K delta inhibitor called TG1202. And what we're seeing is that even on longer follow-up on these patients, um, they are not showing the side effects that we saw with idralacept so far. So that, like, there's no um, transaminitis or colitis that is severe, similar to what we saw with the first generation drug, idralacept. So, yes, we know that certain pathways can be targeted in CLL, but now we're working on how we can improve what we achieved over the last three years, and that's very, you know, Promising news for our patients, so that's a very exciting news.